Well, hi there. Personally, I think that the wild type color and pattern is the coolest because there's usually a cool explanation for why that color and pattern have been successful in the wild. But sometimes mutations occur that result in very unique and beautiful animals that are different from what you typically find in the wild. In the reptile hobby, we generally call these unusual variants morphs. And as a biologist with an interest in genetics, I find them very fascinating indeed. Today, I would like to walk you through some of the most common reptile morphs and how to recognize them. But to understand these morphs, you first need to understand the four pigment-producing cell types called chromatophores that reptiles possess. These four chromatophores are xanthophores, erythrophores, iridophores, and melanophores. Of these four, probably the most familiar are melanophores. Melanophores generally produce the brown and black pigment melanin. Melanin is the main pigment that you see in humans. It is also very common in reptiles, like this ball python, that has many brown and black regions. Many of the common morphs that we will discuss involve melanophores. Here, for example, is a ball python that has no melanin at all. But what you likely notice is that it still has other colors, mostly yellow. Yellow pigments, called pteridine pigments, are produced by chromatophores called xanthophores. And red and orange pigments, called carotenoids, are produced by chromatophores called urethrophores. And that pretty much covers all of the pigments, but not all of the colors. Of course, some colors can be produced by blending these pigments, but some colors, like greens, blues, and purples, are not possible by mixing brown, black, red, yellow, and orange pigments. And yet, you sometimes see these colors, as you do in this neon day gecko, or this green tree monitor, or the iridescent rainbow of this rainbow boa. These colors are possible due to the activity of iridophores, otherwise known as guanophores. Iridophores produce guanine crystals, hence the name guanophores, that reflect light in such a way as to make blues and subsequently greens and purples possible. So this isn't a pigment, but rather a reflective crystal structure that produces these colors. And now that we know about these four chromatophore types in reptiles, we're ready to discuss the common color morphs, because they all involve some sort of irregular functioning of one or more of these chromatophores. One of the most common morphs that you're likely to encounter is hypomelanism, often referred to as hypo. So hypomelanism means less than normal melanin. Animals that are hypomelanistic have less than the normal amount of melanin. This isn't to say no melanin. They still have some brown or black pigment, just less than is typical of their species. The complete lack of melanin is not hypomelanism, but another condition altogether, albinism. Albino animals, like this leopard gecko, generally lack melanin completely. They at least lack the brown and black pigments eumelanin, which is the most commonly observed form of melanin. There are other forms of melanin, such as pheomelanin, that is clearly observed in red-haired humans. And so albinism generally just refers to the absence of brown or black pigments. Other types of melanins may be present, depending on where in the pathway to the production of melanin the mutation occurred that halted the melanin production. Sometimes you will hear forms of albinism that still show some forms of melanin, referred to as tyrosinase positive or T positive albino, because tyrosinase is an enzyme involved in the production of these other forms of melanin. And forms of albinism that show no forms of melanin at all are referred to as tyrosinase negative or T negative albino. The total absence of melanin, T negative albino, is probably the form of albinism that most people associate with albino animals. They generally have large amounts of white and red eyes, since the melanin is absent from the eyes, meaning that the only color that is generated is by the blood in the eyes. Other forms of albinism may not be as easily identifiable. In many ways, they may look much like hypomelanistic animals, but the difference is the lack, not just the reduced amount of brown or black pigments. Basically, the opposite of albinism is hypermelanism. The root hyper means over or excessive. Hypermelanistic animals produce excessive amounts of melanin compared to others of their species. 
If you look closely at this black pine snake, you can see that it has normal pituophis pattern, but it is concealed by hyperproduction of melanin. In the case of this snake, hypermelanism has become the wild type coloration. IMG boas, IMG standing for increasing melanism gene or something similar to that, begin life looking pretty typical and become increasingly black with age. But animals with atypically high levels of melanin are hypermelanistic. But melanin is not the only pigment that can occur in unusual quantities. The lack of yellow pteridine pigments is called azanthism. Azanthic animals lack this yellow pigment. Azanthic animals, like this hognose snake, tend to look more gray and black than other members of their species. As you could tell looking at an albino ball python, the brown coloration on the sides of a wild type snake are created by combining some melanin and some yellow pteridine pigments. When the melanin is gone, the yellow remains. Well, with azanthism, the yellow is gone, leaving only the melanin. Melanin can be black or brown, so some azanthic animals are still somewhat brown. This hog nose is still a bit brown. But what you will notice is that it lacks all of the yellows, especially those on the belly that you would see with a wild type individual like shovel face here. And it is more gray overall than a typical hog nose. While there are also likely animals that are hypoxanthic or hyperxanthic, I don't often see those terms used. It probably is just because the intensity of the yellow, if present, is not as conspicuous as the intensity of melanin. Honestly, in most species, even the complete lack of pteridine pigments takes a careful eye to notice. That is, unless you're looking at an animal that is also lacking melanin. The combination of albino and azanthic is often called snow because the animals are often nearly white, lacking both melanin and pteridine pigments. That said, snows are often not quite all white. They frequently have some pink, red, or orange coloration. And this is because even in the absence of melanin and pteridine, they may still produce carotenoids, red and orange pigments produced by the erythrophores. Animals that do not produce carotenoids, whose erythrophores are not functioning, are called anerythristic, or anery for short. Anerythristic animals are, again, often more gray than is typical of their species. It can be easy to confuse them with azanthic animals, but remember, it is the red and orange that will be absent, not the yellow. And this is really helpful on animals like boas that typically have red tails. That tail will be gray on an anery individual, but will still have some traces of red on an azanthic individual. And anery individuals may still possess some yellow pigments. Once again, hypo and hyper urethristic animals exist, but I don't tend to see those terms often used. So those are all of the morphs that alter a single pigment type. But what about a morph that alters multiple pigment types at the same time? That would be leucism. Leucism generally impacts the deposition of pigments into the skin or feathers of reptiles. And this is why it can impact multiple pigment types simultaneously. This can result in an all-white animal, but also other levels of reduced pigmentation. For example, in ball pythons, there are all-white leucistic ball pythons, as well as leucistic such as crystals and mystic potions that are not entirely lacking pigmentation, but show a reduction in multiple pigment types. But most mammals only possess melanin, and as a result, albino mammals are generally all-white. People often mistake my leucistic ball pythons for albinos when they see them. They are often surprised to see that albino snakes are generally not all white. But another difference between albinism and leucism is that leucism does not tend to impact the eyes to the same degree as albinism. Some leucistics have very dark eyes, and many have reduced pigmentation resulting in blue eyes, but not the pigment-free red eyes of albinos. In some cases, leucism has an irregular impact on the body, resulting in patches of leucism and patches that are unaffected or nearly unaffected. This is called piebaldism. Piebald animals can be very striking. Piebald ball pythons are very amazing to see, but it is also common in animals like Holstein cows, pinto horses, really any cat with a lot of white on it. Any animal with heritable, irregular white patches is probably demonstrating piebaldism. And that 
is a solid introduction to reptile color morphs. If you want to know more about how the genetics of morphs work, please watch our four-part series on ball python genetics. The truth is that genetics works this way for all sexually reproducing diploid organisms, and that's pretty much everything you would ever want to breed. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Means less than normal melanin. Hang on. Yeah. How many, what, like, what is going on? Just like a guy out there, like, I'm gonna stand here. <laughs> Yeah, he must have his four-year-old son on board today. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the whistle as often as you like, Billy. He's like, is that a train? I love trains. <laughs> he and Sheldon Cooper had a heck of a conversation the other day. Less than the normal amount of melanin. That was good timing, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> If it weren't for this channel, this gecko would have been eaten by a monitor several years ago. But I borrowed him when we filmed our leopard gecko video and found out that he was slated to be eaten. And I was like, well, we can't have him get eaten by a monitor now. We filmed him. Yeah. And so I, I bought him.